Hello, my name is Anne Iveson and I'm Senior Advisor to the Collar Institute of Private Equity. I'm here today at the Private Equity Findings Symposium at London Business School. And joining me this afternoon is Professor Francesca Cornelli, who is Professor of Finance at London Business School and, perhaps more importantly, the Academic Director of the Collar Institute. Francesca, thank you for joining me. Private Equity Findings is the symposium and that is named after our publication that we launched back in 2009. It is, uh, as, you, as you know and said this morning, it goes out to over 30,000 people and now we are launching our fourth issue. Could you talk a bit about the purpose of our publication and specifically what is in this current issue? Sure. Private equity findings really exemplifies what we want to do as a Collar Institute because we see ourselves as the bridge between academics and practitioners. And it's very difficult to connect these two worlds. The practitioners want clear cut, uh, you know, bottom line is about uh, what are there returns, are there no returns, what is good, what should, should I do, what should I not do. Academics write long papers in which are concerned about doing the methodology exactly right and being absolutely fair and impartial in their conclusion. And very often these two approaches don't talk to each other, but that doesn't mean there isn't something to talk about. And in fact, so what we think is we go and look for the best, highest quality academic research, whether it's a London Business School or is outside, we just want the best and some of the best luckily is at London Business School but we don't want to be parochial. We go look for the best and then we want to translate it for practitioners. Too often uh, an academic paper really gets translated into a half line which, which really can't really capture what is the contribution of the article because very often the academic paper will it will have be nuanced will just not have a half line so what we try to do is capture the entire uh, spirit of the article captures the numbers which are relevant and also give the insight of how this is, was obtained. Because I, ideally, a practitioner should be able to read it and say, you know what, I do not like how uh, they obtained this. I do not like how they studied this. And therefore, I don't believe their results, which is fair enough. But if you're just given a number or a half uh, line, then you, are not, you just have to take it as a black box. So private equity findings really tries to tell Uh, the practitioner this is what is around in academics this is what we find and you can actually read it believe it understand more of what we've done now said that what have we done here and there's the last uh, issues there are several points which are actually quite interesting one it goes back to the issue of leverage for example which after the financial crisis got a lot of attention and indeed what is interesting is they look at what determines leverage of a company what affects Now, if one look at public companies, you will see that a company, for example, with less variance in the cash flows will have more leverage because it's more able to sustain the interest payment due to this leverage. Or a company which has very little assets in place, very little assets that can be used as collateral will have less leverage. Again, because you you can't have uh, enough secured leverage. Now, what turns out in private equity the char- such characteristics of the firm have no relevance at all for uh, the um, for what is leverage. The leverage is completely determined by the interest rate out in the market. That is, if the debt is cheap, is particularly low, companies they will lever up companies, and that in a sense is a bad uh, view of uh, uh, the private equity leverage because it says it's not really thought out how do we do it in the most sophisticated way, you know, let's structure it around the company, it's just well, they offer that cheap interest rate, then we will take it, which is fair enough, you take it, but it doesn't require particularly expertise. And therefore, and they also show that, you know, if cheap debt should 
give an advantage to private equity, then we should find higher returns for the period with a cheap debt, we actually find lower returns. And what it means is this trans disadvantage in terms of cheap debt was actually translated in highest price, higher prices paid at the acquisition. And so that is not such a good news if you want about uh, private equity. Another one which instead the more uh, good news is looking at networks and what we see is the um, private equity is able to add value not only by overlooking the management and helping them as they usually decree but also by creating synergies among com portfolio companies helping them to put in contacts and uh, you know sometimes two companies may indeed merge if there are synergies but helping each other out so that there is a the, they can help a company to reach an entire network of other places. And this is exactly something that was touched upon this morning on the panel of value creation. How important is the network? How important is to open these possibilities at other companies? And another article, which is also again value creation, it was touched today in the panel, was another article which shows when uh, uh, private equity is able to intervene and, for example, fire the manager value is created by, uh, again, academic uh, methodologies which are uh, sophisticated but they are not to the point per se, so we strip down all that part from the academic paper, but the point is we can actually establish causality in the sense that we do know that the company is in the end performing better because private equity is monitoring and is effective in intervening when through the monitoring it knows that things are not doing so well. So these are all messages that should be important both for GPs and LPs and you know they get translating into findings this. Another article is about persistence. Apparently there's some new evidence that says that actually maybe persistence is not so much there and maybe due more to the overlapping between two funds in the economic cycle rather than actually be able to replicate all the time. So there's a lot of various things that we are looking at. Okay, thank you very much. I can see now that what we're trying to do with findings is to take research, academic, rigorous research, and make it accessible to a much broader audience. And we hope that we do that in our findings. And I would encourage all of you who have not seen a copy to download one on our website. And uh, please do give us your feedback and your views on, on any of the findings that we have made here. Thank you very much, Francesca. Thank you.